In this video, I'll be talking about the circuit that we're going to use to test the effectiveness of our heat sinks. Uh, in this picture, you can see a setup that shows the Arduino connected to two temperature sensors with a control cup of hot water and one that has our temperature uh, monitoring the heat sink. So we can compare the two. Um, before we go too much further talking about the code and the circuit, I'll point out that this picture is in the OneNote for the class, uh, right next to a more simplified circuit as well, uh, with this diagram created using Fritzen, which is a free uh, software program that you can download if you ever want to use it for your own projects. I really recommend it. Um, the way that we're actually measuring the temperature is with these sensors on the end, um, and if we take a closer look at those, they are the TMP36 um, sensors, and they measure temperature. Um, to learn more about these type of components, you can always look at the numbers on here and just try to Google um, them and add data sheet to the end of your results. Usually the first thing that you'll get is some kind of uh, PDF that explains what that device is and how it operates. That can be a little overwhelming um, looking at all the technical data. So to get a better starting point for us, let's try adding uh, Arduino to the end and see what else exists out there in terms of projects that utilize this sensor. Uh, so top hit here is Adafruit, which is a great educational uh, and commercial website. They usually have some nice tutorials to explain how these things work. Uh, one of the things that I'm often looking for when I start projects like this is some kind of uh, code that will get it up and running real quick. So right here I see they've got an example sketch that we can use for the Arduino itself to make it actually uh, utilize that sensor. So let's copy this code. Uh, I'll double check. Yep, copied it. There's only about 30 lines here so it's fairly short. And put it into a blank Arduino sketch which I already have open here. This is the uh, IDE or Integrated Development Environment. Uh, before I paste it in, I want to make sure I don't uh, include two instances of the setup and loop function, otherwise it won't uh, work right. So let's get that deleted uh, and paste in the code that we copied. I used Control V on the keyboard to do that. Let's take a quick look at what this code does uh, initially. Uh, first of all, I can see there's a lot of comments in the code here, which is great. That'll help us to understand what each piece does. Um, and there's always kind of three main places you want to look. What's in the setup function? What's in the loop function? It'll be everything between here and the closing curly bracket. And above the setup function, what kind of things have been uh, defined? So usually these are going to be integers or uh, variables, libraries that are included. Uh, the only thing I see here is a variable for the sensor pin, and it's assigned to zero and it is an integer type of variable, so just whole numbers. <clears throat> That's going to be the pin on the Arduino that the uh, incoming data is actually connected to. Uh, and it's an analog pin, so it's zero right here. It can get values uh, between zero and five volts. The setup function, what's happening in here is only one thing. It's beginning serial communication, uh, just like we did with the accelerometer uh, in the skyscraper project, this is going to allow us to get data from the sensor printed back onto the screen of the computer. You can open the serial monitor by clicking on the little magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner of the IDE once that code is uploaded. In the loop function, uh, looks like it is going to look at the value that is on the analog pin that the sensor was connected to. Then it does some math on that value uh, and assigns it to a different type of variable. Float um, means that it can have a decimal point in it, so that'll give us more pre precision than just an integer. It then prints out uh, the value of the voltage that it calculated through this math operation and puts the word volts behind that number. So this voltage is the result of the mathematical operations and it'll kind of label volts right behind it. Uh, next, it looks like it does some further math on those stored variables, which converts the voltage value from the sensor into a good approximation of the temperature in degrees Celsius, and then again prints that out to the serial monitor um, with the word behind it here so that we know it's degrees Celsius. And then the last operation does some more math, and that converts it to temperature in degrees Fahrenheit this time, prints it out. 
Uh, last thing before the loop closes is a delay of 1000 milliseconds. So as the comment says here, that's a one second delay. And that's the entire program. Um, let's upload this to my Arduino, which I have connected right now, uh, and just kind of see what it looks like. I don't have the full circuit constructed, but we should still uh, have it print some values back. Remember, when you first launch the IDE and plug something in, you should always check under Tools that the type of Arduino board you have connected is the one that you're using. Uh, in our classroom, we have a bunch of Unos, so generic Unos uh, will work here just as well as the um, official Arduino version. And then also really important, you need to tell it what um, USB port you're plugged into. I'm on a Macintosh right now, so it calls those COM ports. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on a PC, so it'll probably look similar to this. On a Macintosh, it would be a more extended uh, kind of path here. But yeah, make sure you've actually gone over and clicked on this. If it doesn't have the check mark, then um, it won't actually send the data the correct location. That looks good, so I'm going to upload this. Uh, if you haven't saved your work yet, it will prompt you to try to save your work before you upload it. Uh, you can always hit cancel and it will still process that upload. So it's compiling it, turning it in ones and zeros, making it all binary. And now it's uploading that to the chip and looks like it was successful. Uh, if I launch the serial monitor now with the device connected, it'll end up looking something like this. So I see that every second here, it's printing three new lines of information to the serial monitor, the volts, the degrees Celsius, and the degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it is not hotter than boiling in my uh, room right now, but again, that's because I don't actually have a sensor connected. Uh, so we're just getting a kind of floating voltage on the analog pin right now, which causes these crazy values. Um, this is great feedback to know if something is working correctly or incorrectly with your circuit right away. Uh, if these values aren't reasonable, you should double check all of your connections on the circuit. Um, so right now, this is information that we could um, use to assess the effectiveness of our sensor, but it would be nice if we got rid of these words uh, and some of the information that we don't need. So it's easier to copy and paste this into a graphing program like Excel. The end goal here would be that we can create something that looks like this. Uh, I've already gathered a, a set of data and grafted in Excel. Um, and what I wanted was just raw numbers because that works well with Excel. No words or labels. I don't want volts or degrees Celsius um, to be included when I copy and paste this over. So let's modify our code here um, to only print out numbers. You can see an easy solution would be to get rid of any of the serial commands that are printing words. Um, these strings here that are in the parentheses, I can just delete those out. When you delete these, make sure that you're not accidentally deleting the semicolon that was in the line before it, because those are um, important kind of end statements for uh, the print command that was before it. Um, okay, so we could check that out. If I upload it again and take a look at the serial monitor, we should end up with no words printed to the serial monitor now, just numbers. Yep, that looks good, but we're running into an issue here where we don't really know where the numbers end. It's just printing them um, left to right without any kind of organization. So um, we're going to need to modify a few other things. And as long as I'm here, we should further modify this so that it is operating on two sensors. Right now, the example code that was provided by um, the website Adafruit, I took it from, was using a sensor, uh, only a single sensor on the Arduino. So let's take a look back at the sketch here and see if we can duplicate some important parts. Right here where they define where, uh, what pin the sensor pin is connected to, I'm going to copy that with Control C on the keyboard and paste it down below. So we have two of these. Obviously they can't be identical, so to differentiate between my two sensors, I'm going to call this sensor pin 1 and sensor pin 2, just giving those variables a new name. Uh, I can't plug two things into the same uh, hole on the Arduino, so I'm going to just use the next available analog input pin to the right, which is um, A1. All right, down here, serial begin. That communication um, applies to the whole sketch, so we don't need to do anything there. 
And before I like double up all of these commands, I'm going to make a decision right now to only look at the um, temperature and degrees Celsius. Uh, that's the most appropriate one to use for science, which means I really don't care about knowing the voltage or the degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to get rid of everything here at the bottom that converted the temperature and degrees Fahrenheit and then printed that value out. I really don't even need that, so I'm going to delete that. And the uh, voltage here where it's printing that to the serial monitor, I'm going to delete that part. I'm not going to delete the conversion here, the math that it's doing with the voltage, because it ultimately needs that in order to calculate the degrees Celsius. So it's important to keep that. I'll just get rid of some of that white space. Um, all right, so the loop here has gotten much shorter. It opens there, closes there. It takes a reading of that sensor pin, does some math on it, and ultimately converts that to degrees Celsius before printing it out. Um, we can, again, check our work here to make sure we haven't deleted anything critical. I should now just be getting uh, one number printed out over and over again. Okay, so I'm getting an error right here because I already changed the variable name up here. Uh, I would have to make sure I change that down here before I check my work. Uploading. As soon as that's done, we'll take a look at the serial monitor. And it's printing a value, printing another value, printing another value. So those are just the uh, degrees Celsius values right now. Looks good. Um, one quick change I can make is instead of having that print um, left to right, I can have it print um, in a straight column by changing this command from just print to print ln, which means print line. It hits return essentially every time that it prints a value. So it's a lot easier to see that data sorted into a column. Um, yeah, now it's going down. All right, so we've got one value, sensor pin one. Let's get the other value printing out to the monitor as well. So here, where I took a reading of sensor pin one, we're going to need to take a reading of sensor pin two. So I'm going to control C to copy that. I'm going to paste in that second reading. And this is on pin two now. Again, I've got these defined integer variables over here. This thing called reading is storing the results of this operation where it looks at the value on sensor pin one. I can't have two things named the same. So let's just call this reading one and reading two to differentiate between the two sensors. Looking down here, the um, operation uh, that we do on reading in order to assign it to this variable called voltage, um, we'll also have to double up all of those values. So let's just take these two lines of code and double that. Call this uh, voltage one is what happens when you do this math on reading one. And then a final operation there for voltage one. Down here, these will be for uh, voltage two is everything that's happening to this variable reading two. So I'll add two, two, and two. And then lastly down here, the part of the code that does the final conversion to get this into two degrees Celsius, um, we're going to need to differentiate that we've got two different um, degrees Celsiuses that we're keeping track of, the one for sensor one and the other one for sensor two. And it's working on the voltages, these ones up here, which I changed their names to voltage one and voltage two. Uh, all right, so the thing that I wanted to print out is both of those values, uh, temperature C1 and temperature C2, and then I'm going to have it separate those with a comma in between because Excel is really good at separating um, values that have a comma between them into two columns, like we saw in my uh, graph over here, these two values with a space between them. Uh, so let's work effectively by using copy and paste and paste in a few more of these serial print commands. The first thing I'll have it do is print um, the first value here, C1. And then I want it to not hit return right away. I want to make sure that it um, like gives me a full line of data that has both values with a comma before it hits uh, return. So it's only going to be on the third print command here that I leave the ln in place. Um, 
the next thing I wanted to do is put a comma between those values. So literally, that has to be a string, um, meaning that you use the quotation marks there to tell it that it should print a comma uh, next. And then finally, print temperature 2, so temperature C2. Uh, let's upload that. So it'll compile, first of all, and check to see that everything is correct and there's no syntax errors. Maybe you forgot to put a semicolon somewhere. Looks like I didn't miss anything. And yeah, now it's working the way that um, will be easiest for us to handle uh, as we copy and paste and try to graph this. There's temperature C1, uh, the comma that we wanted it to print, the second value, C2, and then it hits return for the next line. And this will keep going and printing um, a value every second until we tell it to stop. When I'm eventually ready to graph this data, um, one of the things that you can uh, have it do is uh, unplug the Arduino. And because it doesn't have any serial communication happening now, it'll stop auto-scrolling on you. I'm going to grab that last value and go to the very top and copy it, Control-C. Now over in um, the uh, Excel, which I already have open, you'd be able to paste that in and use some of the similar techniques that we did with the um, accelerometer project to separate this into two columns using their little wizard here. Deliminated it is. We have a comma deliminating it. It's not a tab, but a comma. Hit next and finish. And there it's put our uh, data into two nice columns, which will be easy to graph. Uh, and I show in the next uh, video how to go about making sure that you get your graph to give you meaningful information, including um, putting labels on it and um, changing some of the values.